guys, we're up on the roof here in beautiful downtown Wilmington. It's lovely. Replacing one of the two compressors on this LG mini split that is matched up with a floor standing air handler, four tons. Our first objective is to get the door off, even though the screws are stripped out. Our bad compressor right here. Top on it, there's two compressors. Control board, transformer, two relays to bring the compressors on. Two run capacitors. This one's coming out. This is our compressor in question. It's going to be leaving. There's our other compressors also been worked on in the past. Down, you can't really see it. Let me see if I can enlarge it down there. The electronic expansion valve is down there. You can't really see it. So this R22 mini split, so it's been around for a while. I think this is about 10 years old, maybe a little bit more. So mini splits can live over 10 years. Now I don't have a problem. Two fan motors, one for each compressor. Got our two capacitors. We'll end up replacing those, I'm sure, just because we're working on these compressors. So there we go. Take it all the refrigerant out. Hopefully, all of it's still there. Our old compressor is gone. I'm putting the mounting bolts back on a new compressor. Have our piping fitted back up. There's enough play in this pipe where you can trim it off, fit it right back down into the new compressor. There's our electrical terminals. So it should be welded in here in about a minute or so. I have my bolts. I'm putting them back on. I got one back here to do. And then we can put this thing into a test nitrogen wise and then pull a vacuum and hopefully she'll start back up beautifully. Our pressure test held just fine. We have a transform up here. This is not a uh, part of the unit that was here originally. We have two relays here. If we can see them. Right here and the one below it. These two relays were actually not originally either. Uh, when the contactors or the equivalent relays, they weren't contactors, but they were for the compressors. They went bad and they had 120 volt coils and the factory part was not available. So my brother had come in with a transformer and powered the transformer with a relay that would turn both these contactors and close them and send power to the compressors at the appropriate time. So he kind of made do with the parts he had on hand and what I'm going to do is we're going to try to go with that a little bit more and just put a fuse in there just in case the con or the transformer blows. We don't damage this board which is probably in short supply as well. So it's all about keeping the parts here that keep the unit rolling when we need it to and not having to order anything from Bangladesh or the Arctic Circle. Guys, this old Goodman gas pack right here, the gas pack, as you can see, up on the rooftop, restaurant downtown. Me and Pop put this in 12 years ago. As you can see. crazy time fly all right guys we started the unit up it pulled into a vacuum very quickly but there's only three pounds about one third of the charge a little bit more so we're going to add some charge thinking it's not the electronic expansion valve because we have pressure at the liquid line but not the suction line so it just looks like a lack of refrigerant so we're going to try to fill it up a little bit more with it running putting it in from the suction This would explain some high head pressure. The compressor was running high amperage. There is no discharge pressure port or liquid pressure port, but you can tell from the discharge temperature of the fan that there was an issue, and you can see that it's just nasty crap coming off that coil because look what we have sitting around. We have this within about eight foot, and it's just nasty, nasty stuff. The unit has been defunct. We noticed a high amp draw on the compressors. One of them was near the rated load amps. So we wanted to go ahead and clean the coil off, because although it looked good with all the grease floating around up here, and they just changed out the roof or redid the roof, so who knows how much crap is in there. So I used old Ralph's trusted 
trusty coil cleaner there and we cleaned it out in the dark. Guys, he's been running for about 10 more minutes, but we're gonna run it for about 10 more minutes and we're gonna see where it's at. Uh, like I said, there's no high gauge port on it. So what we're doing is I'm taking the amp off the compressor and we're taking a discharge temperature sensor and see what it looks like there as well. Just to compare with what we had before. But right now we're running about two amps lower than we were before. But we're gonna let the water dry off that coil and see that temperature and the uh, amperage come up a little bit, I'm sure. So hopefully we'll be good to go. Just need a little bit of preventive maintenance. And more than likely that level of uncleanliness is what led to the compressor's demise.